Welcome to Seven Trumpets Prepper, and in this video today we're going to show you a simple do-it-yourself solar project. And how to do a complete install from your solar panels to your battery bank and to your power inverter. So let's take a look at it now. Okay, to begin with, you're going to need some tools for this project. A drill, and I would also encourage you to have a light. I've got the combo kit here, so just a regular light will work just fine. I would encourage you to take some clamps. Uh, to have some small clamps around to help you if you're doing this by yourself to hold the panels in place while you fasten it with the hardware and I'll go over that in just a second. Um, some safety glasses, a wrench, and a tape measure and a marking pen such as a sharpie, sorry wrong one, a sharpie or a marking pen normal. And I would also maybe get some vice grips if you wanted to clamp it that way too. Now, the components that we have here is all been purchased either at Harbor Freight Tool or we picked it up at like a truck dealership. Like right here, these Exide batteries were uh, acquired through a truck dealership. Now, I will tell you one quick note. If you want to get cheap batteries, find a place that sells batteries and wait for them to get their, their batteries that are on sale to the point where that they're about to go out of warranty setting on the shelf. And once they go past that point, Places will turn, just take them off the shelf because they can't sell it with a warranty to the customer anymore and they'll just put it in their core pile. You could buy that battery for just what the core charge might cost. Yes, it's set there for probably a year, but you're still going to probably get two or three years out of this. Okay, so there's an option that might save you some money on your batteries. You're going to need to get three of these kits if you're going to mount these on the roof because I'm not going to use the plastic frame that came with this from Harbor Freight Tools. So, you're going to get three of these, and we'll put the part number for all these items in the bottom of the description and links to help you get this stuff. And you're going to need the solar panel kit. This is a 45 watt solar panel kit, Thunderbolt Magnum Solar, um, purchased at Harbor Freight Tool. Make sure to check um, online at retailmenot.com, and you can catch a coupon code from time to time. I got a 20% coupon code that helps save a ton of money on that. Now we're going to go over here and Brian is going to demonstrate how to hook these batteries up and show you the battery bank setup because we're, we've are we got our battery bank in a very confined area so we're going to show it to you here in a wide open area so you can see all the components. So Brian's going to take you through it here. The first thing you're going to do is hook up your links and make sure that your negatives are on the same side, both sides are negative, these are the positives. You get your links put on. Once you get the once you get the links put on, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up. Remember, reds positives, blacks negatives. Well, Brian's hooking this up. Uh, most of these components that we're hooking right now are made by Dynacraft. You can purchase these at a truck dealership. Um, if you go to like a Kenworth or a Peterbilt. I was able to acquire these from where I work at because they had tossed these out. Or like this one cable, we've repaired it and we're using it for our project now. But you can purchase these, like I said, at a truck dealership. Now that you've got these hooked, now you're going to take your other ends of these. Hook up on one end. He's gonna hold that for me. You can take, uh, make sure you have your covers. And then you're gonna have the nut. I'm gonna screw these down on them. Then you wanna cover these up, and what that's for is to keep anything else from ever getting on top of your post and causing arcing. If you wanna go ahead and start on these others, brother, I'll tighten those right. down. I'm gonna get them tied down. Now, what we're doing right now is setting up a two battery bank. Uh, this is a very small bank, but you can keep expanding on this later. This is going to, we've got this set up in 12 volt. 
in series. Um, you know, some people want to go 24, 36 volt setups. We're doing the very simple basic. This is a 12 volt setup, so that's what we're doing right here. Now we come in, we're going to hook up our positive side. Now we're going to check it, we're going to flip this on, you can hear it starting to run, we're sitting at 13 right now, so we actually had juice. Now what you see right here is what we're about to work into a confined space. Next we're going to go outside onto the roof and do the solar array installation on the roof and then we're going to come back in and then me and Brian's going to demonstrate to you from the charge controller. Uh, hooked into the batteries and then to the light bulbs and the DC fixtures and then we're also going to plug some stuff in to the inverter and show you just how this can help benefit you as an individual. Okay now this right here is the frame mount that comes with the kit that you can put it together and mount the panels onto that that's the plastic mount but like I said earlier we're not going to do that we're going to take the metal frames outside with us. Now here is your solar panels and the instructions and everything that comes with it. Lay that over the side. Now these are really easy to connect. I'm going to show you when I get on the roof here in just a second. You just slide these into the connections, the other connections off of it. You just stick it into it. We'll get on the roof here in just a second, unbox these, and then I'll show you how to mount them to the brackets and then bring them down to this wire connector. Okay, so before we begin mounting the solar panels onto the roof here, I want to go over some parts. We've got a part number MB250. All these uh, items can be purchased at a Walmart in the hardware section. These are insulated staples. What they're going to be used for is to help hold the wire down into place. I'll show you here shortly. Now, you may need the long screws, or you might just need some short screws depending on the surface you're mounting. So the part number on the long screws is SM85. You'll need two packs to do this 45-watt kit, or you can get a... SM82 uh, and it's got 50 in it for the shorties. Now you can get NW-280 part number and these hose washers I'm going to put them right up and under this right here on the frame where I screw it down. And lastly you're going to need some NW-57s to go on the inner portion of the frame right here uh, for your screw to go against. That way we have a good seal all the way around. Now here's the panels. These are amorphous panels, so even in cloudy conditions, you're still going to get um, a, a good output of power, as opposed to like uh, polycrystalline, monocrystalline panels where they, they need hardcore direct sunlight at all times. So I'm going to install the first one, and I'm going to show you how I mounted it and everything, and then we'll finish the other three up, and then I'll go to the wiring. Now at this point here, We've affixed the first solar panel to the roof, and the process by doing so was this screw with that washer through the metal frame with the, the O-ring underneath so it's sealed good against the roof and won't leak. And now at this point, we're going to take our frame, and depending on where you're facing the sun, I mean, some people may not even need these frames, okay? They make just the little mounts that goes underneath the frame itself to screw to your roof. If your roof is perfectly uh, on the plane with the south uh, sky, southern sky, you're fine. But now if you're like me, I'm not exactly right on the money, so to accommodate for that, I've got these mounting frames. And now at this point here, I'm going to adjust it back, and right there is where I need mine. And here in a minute, I'll show you how to run the wire down from all three panels once that I get this bolted into place with my hardware. Okay, so now we've got the panels. Uh, put into a ray there and all that's left is to take and connect the wires to the three-way adapter that I'll show you in just a second. But I want to take a moment of your time and talk to you about events that's soon to come. When trumpet four takes place during the seven trumpets that's described in Revelation, there's going to be a third of the sun, moon, and the sky, it's going to go dark and it's going to be very hard to uh, for us to carry on normal activity like we have in the past. 
Now today it's kind of cloud cover right now, and uh, you know these panels probably wouldn't get very much light at all anyway. But when these events begin to take place here in the near future, especially after trumpets one, two, and threes put who knows how much debris up in the atmosphere, we're going to have a hard time getting uh, power from our panels. So I think amorphous panels, although they don't get as much output as normal panels, I think they're still a good investment. And at least you have some power. I'd rather have some part of something than all of nothing. So this is something to keep in mind because when Trumpet 4 does take place, we're going to be short on a lot of the light that we would have been getting normally. So let's continue this project now. And I would encourage you, if you haven't seen the 7 Trumpets Revelation series at worldslastchance.com, to check it out. So let's get back to work. I'll show you the rest. Now if you'll notice right here in relation to my house where I'm at and here's the southern sky and the sun transits through here. I didn't locate this in just any arbitrary location but I located it where that my neighbors wouldn't see them or people passing by so they're kind of in a safe location. Now at this point I'm going to run the wire down beside the house down beside my little area there uh, screened in for our cats and then drill a hole and bring it into the house and I'll show you all that here in the next step. Okay now we've got the wiring all mounted in place from the panels feeding down the side of the house now so if the wind comes and wants to kick up on the roof these are secured very good and that was using these insulated staples. Now I will probably come back and put just a little bit of clear silicone around those later just to make sure that there's no moisture that gets down past that and you know leaks onto the roof or anything. But that's got that portion of the build complete. Now we're going to move to bringing it down the side of the house and into the to the battery bank. Okay, now I'm below the house and we have the cord coming down. Now I'm going to fasten that to the side of the board here. And then I'm going to bring this down to this connection here, and this is our Y adapter. So I've already got one plugged in. You just turn it and plug it like so. And then I'm going to run this into the house, and like I said earlier, into the battery bank. So we've almost completed the process. All right, now I'm in the house, and I am drilling out the holes that we're going to need for the discharge of the battery uh, in case that if they do overheat or as they're charging, they discharge any gas that will go out. I'm going to run the tube up around here and out. Now what I've got going on right now is I've got this wire here that is coming out side of right there and that's going to meet up with the three-way plug off the solar panels outside. Now I'll show you how to hook that up outside here in just a minute. But at the moment that comes into here to this charge controller that I've got on and I'm using one of the bulbs at the moment to light the way. That wiring will come in from outside from the panels so we've got the, the three way from the panels coming in on this cord right here to where it says right here solar panel. We're going to hook up our negative and our positive. Just like Brian said earlier a red is positive, black's negative. Then it's got an inline fuse here uh, built into the thing now what we're going to do now, or I'm sorry, the uh, fuse is built into the module, not into the line. Anyway, from there, we've got the wires coming off the battery, which I've hooked up. All we've got to do is lift up our caps and hook right here both of the uh, cables, just like you'd hook up, say you were trying to boost off a car. You just do the same thing. You hook your black to your uh, negative, red to the positive. That runs up to the charge controller so that as the power is filtering in, it can uh, run down to your batteries and charge them. Okay? Now, I'll run that wire outside, and then I'm going to show you the complete installation outside of the three-way plug. And then we'll come back in, and I'll show you how to run the uh, discharge line for the batteries out. Okay, now you can see where that we've ran the hosing out. And we've got that vented. I'm going to have to trim that up, make all that flush. But now we've got that venting out of the house, getting the gas out away from the batteries. And I'll show you how I've got that hooked to the batteries in a minute. We've also got the wire coming from the three-way lead here. See, I've made all this nice and neat and compact so that as it comes down from the panels, down the side of the house here, we've got it all together where I can easily come out here and check the connections, make sure if any issues, I can check it right there on the spot and take a voltage meter and check and see what the problem is without having to get up on the roof or in a confined space. 
Now I've got this one wire leading into the house and then of course the, the tubing venting out at my batteries and I will end up putting some caulking around this later on. And that pretty much concludes outside. Now we're gonna move inside and get this build finished. Now we've got everything that needs to be to the outside finished through that area. Now I'll seal that back up later and put some foam into that uh, to help keep the hose into place and the wiring. I'm going to wipe all this debris up. Now that hosing, uh, I'll get you the part number for it. I got it at AutoZone. It is actually a vehicle fuel line hose, I believe is what I'm using for the vapors. Now eventually that may deteriorate according to the guy at AutoZone. I couldn't get no um, line from nowhere that's actually made specific for the batteries to vent but as you can see right here I've got one running to both batteries so as we've shown you earlier Brian's shown you how to wire it together I've got the venting hose to it we've got our cables running up to the charge controller and the charge controller is receiving the power from the panels taking it to the batteries and now here in a minute we're gonna go uh, over this together with Brian. Uh, I'll show you a few things about this charge controller and we're going to have this project finished. But now I'm going to turn it over to Brian. He's going to tell you about the charge controller and show you some fixtures on this and hook up some stuff. Uh, one of the things right here on your box it has got an indicator. It's just telling you how much juice you're getting out of your batteries right now. So th with that you can power these bulbs here. They're 5 watt um, output and they run on 12 volt. You can actually see them turn on. And there's a second one we've got set in here, and you've got two plug outlets, so you can run them both. Of course, you can run 12 volt um, power source off there, and then you've got your uh, multi utilities there. You can hook up different phones, I reckon, different power sources off that. Uh, over here, you got your inverter. You can actually see we've got the charger hooked in. You turn that on, and light up. So if you've got power tools and things, especially like when your power's out in your house, you take this and you hook it on and you can see it's going to charge batteries for you. So that's just something to look at. So it's not just for when things go bad, that if your power's out, these can always just be a benefit throughout any time of year. And not only that, just in case that we have some days where the panels don't give us power, we've got a, a battery charger here that we could plug in during a good, you know, where times are good, plug it in, get us a good charge, just in case it's been a bunch of cloudy days. But being they're amorphous panels, they're going to get sunlight charging the panels, even if it's a cloudy day. That's one positive of using those panels, like I said earlier. But overall, this is a great project to do. We spent, how much do we spend on this total? About, what was it, $400? Somewhere around. 400. We got about 400 or a little more invested in this. Uh, you know, like I said about the batteries, uh, make sure to check with places that sell batteries. You can probably buy some very cheap, even though they're out of warranty, but you're saving a ton of money. And it's not hard to wire this in. And overall, this may save someone's life one day if you depend upon, you have medical equipment that may need, uh, you know, power source. So we hope this has been a blessing to you. Until we see you again here at Seven Trumpets Prepper Channel, have a most blessed day. And Yahushua name.